us. We have here today is a burn test. You'll see before you a block of the composite material that we've been testing on the right. And on the left is a box of a comparable size made of material that usually is used in the construction of most houses. You've got LP siding stapled to about a half inch of OSB board. Behind that, I've got five inches of insulation and in the very core, sheetrock. Now what I did with both these blocks is I put each one individually in a kitchen oven and heated them up to between 145 to 175 degrees until the very core of both blocks reached the ambient temperature of the inside of the oven when it was its hottest. Then I turned the oven off, I put my meter on the inside, that's my meter right there. I put the meter probe on the inside, on the very core, and I measured the time it took for that core to reach an ambient temperature of the outside air once I opened the oven door. The composite block on the right took about 60 hours for the core of the block to reach ambient temperature. The box on the left which is made of industry standard materials, that took about 20 hours. So we can conclude almost that the composite block on the right has three times the U factor, or R factor, however you're looking at it, than the industry standard. But what I'm gonna do now is show you how long it takes for both blocks to be compromised by a very, very hot torch. I'm gonna light this up and see how long it takes for it to burn. Now we saw in an earlier video that the composite block doesn't burn at all. So what I did is I took the meter, which is now showing about 44 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of January, and I put the probe in the block made out of the composite. This is going to simulate a building or a shed or a house or a barracks made out of this material. How long does it take for the temperature to reach the other side of the wall where it now becomes a hazard to the occupants inside that building? Will this withstand flash fires that we sometimes see down in California where entire neighborhoods burn down or a forest fire in Wyoming or Colorado? If someone is trapped in their neighborhood and has to egress to a safe house, wouldn't it be nice for this safe house to be made out of material that does not burn and does not conduct heat fast enough to where they are safe within that particular building? So I'm going to light this torch and we're going to see just how long these two blocks last. Zoom in on my watch. Hope you can see that. It's about 1400 hours, 1402 hours, January 30th.
So you can see that the box on the left, well, that didn't hold up too well. I've only had the flame on it for five minutes, and it is totally engulfed on one side with flame. Don't think you want to be in a building made out of this material in a flash fire, whereas the composite is intact, and we're going to subject it to some more time with the torch to see how long it will last and how long it takes for the core of this composite block to reach a temperature that would be detrimental to life. That is to say, we're simulating a building where people are inside this structure made out of this composite. How long will it protect them from the heat? There, I tipped the block. I tipped the box over so you can see just how much damage was done within just five minutes of the torch being applied both the block and the box. Now I'm going to get rid of the box and we're going to focus primarily on the composite block. So now I've got it set up for just the composite block. Time is 14, 17 hours. 30th of January. Temperature is about 43 degrees. Now that's the center of the block, 43 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the ambient temperature, and that's what's on the inside of the block. That's up the very core, about five inches in. This is a 10 by 10 inch by 16 inch block. We're gonna light this baby up and see how much punishment it can take. Let's see how long it's gonna take for the core of this material, which represent the other side of the wall of a shed a building, a house, a barracks. It's going to represent the inside of where the occupants are residing and hiding from a flash fire, tornado, earthquake, anything that would acquire a safe house.
know if you can see my watch. Time is 14, 35 hours. We started the initial burn at about 1400 hours. A little bit of lag time in between setting up the new system. We're, we're only focusing on the block. So we got about uh, 20 to 30 minute heavy burn time on the block alone. Peak meter reads 58 degrees, which it was here about 5-10 minutes ago. I'm going to stop the filming just because I'm running out of space on my camera. We'll check it about every half hour to see what the core temperature is. But before I do that, on both the top and the side. The only thing that's keeping me from getting my hand even closer to the edge is the flame lapping over the edges and making contact with my skin. The block itself is no problem. So I'm going to pause the camera at this time. Time on the clock is 14, 36 hours. See you in a half hour. Okay, it's been about a half hour since we checked everything. About minute seven, 15, seven hours. Temperature in the core, 82 degrees, 83 degrees. quite survivable. That's about almost 40 minutes of burn time combined. Check it out about minute 20. That'll be a full hour of having this torch. It'll be a full hour of torching the block, not counting the initial burn that we had with the other box. Time is 15:22. Been about a half hour since we last checked in. About a complete hour of the heavy burn time on the block. Almost an hour and a half of total burn, but we'll just go with the uh, heavy burn time when we had just the composite block by itself being subjected to the torch. You can see that the temperature is about 96 degrees, 95 degrees. That's five inches of block, composite block. After an hour's burn time, five inches of composite, and it's only gone up to about 95 degrees. See, I can put my hand on the block very close to the edge. Again, the block itself is mildly warm. The only discomfort I have is from the flame lapping over the edge when the wind hits it. 
So we'll check in about another half hour. 15, 25 hours currently. Okay, we are at 1600 hours. Core temperature, 115, 116 degrees, which is quite survivable. Block is still holding its integrity. about two hours that we have subjected this composite block to a very hot torch. Instructions on the torch says this gets up to 3,000 degrees. We'll check back in about a half hour. Okay, we're at minute 16, 21 hours. Core temperature, 128 degrees. That's getting quite warm. It took two hours to get there. That is still survivable. However, that's extremely uncomfortable. But if you're in a flash fire, comfortable is the least of your worries. This block has been under continual blast from this high-powered torch for two hours. If you count in the initial start time, 1,400 hours, that's two and a half hours almost. I would say 127, 128 degrees. We probably pretty much are maxing out at what somebody could withstand inside a safe house that is in a burning home or in their backyard in a shed made of this composite material surrounded by burning embers from a flash fire that ripped through the neighborhood. Regardless, you're probably not going to have this velocity of flame being thrown against the side of your safe house or shed or building made of this composite material. Rather, you'll probably have burning embers. What's left of the house that burned down around it or next to it rather than this miniature jet engine throwing fire at it. So there's a lot of variables and dynamics that would affect a safe house or a shed or a building or a regular home or a barracks. Many different factors that would determine how long someone could survive inside that structure. This just kind of gives you an idea of what this composite can do. The ultimate test would be to build a small structure, throw wood and other combustibles around that structure and light it on fire. See what happens on the inside. We're almost at 130 degrees. Again, that's probably the cutoff point as far as survivability inside a structure, but I'm gonna let this burn a little bit longer and just see how this block holds up. Now you saw the torch test that we subjected both the wooden box made out of industrial standard building materials and the composite block that you see on the right, subjecting them both to a high temperature torch. The high temperature torch, the packaging from which it came in indicates that this will burn as hot as 3000 degrees. And I've worked with glass in kilns and normally when something gets up to two to three thousand degrees it'll glow and if you remember the composite block was actually glowing and we subjected it to about two and a half hours a little bit more 
to a full-on engagement of that torch. The box only lasted about 5-10 minutes and sustained this damage. Now I do have video of the same composite material being subjected to a little bit smaller unit and it also glowed, probably in a, a spot about that big, size of about a silver dollar. My point is when you get this material glowing it's between two to three thousand degrees. But I want to show you the damage. I'll pirouette both the box and the composite block in a few moments to show you the damage from all angles. And when we're all done, I'm going to subject it to some more damage, namely one of these. You see how many strikes they can take after being diminished or minimized by the amount of heat we threw at it through this torching system. This is the temperature gauge that I was using. I constructed these with a cavity about mid-center so I could put the probe inside the cavity and monitor the temperature as we're engaging this with the torch. The box also had the same center cavity so I could perform the same operation. So what I'm going to do now is subject it to the hammer test. First we'll start with the box. Let me uh, show the extent of the damage. This is, I hit the corner with the torch. With this torch. And within five minutes to ten minutes, this is the damage that it produced. Again, remember that we're trying to come up with building materials that's going to live through catastrophic events. Remember the Napa Valley fires and the fires in North California where entire neighborhoods were taken out. That's because they were built with this kind of material. Now let's see how they'll stand up to a sledgehammer. One, two, uh, it doesn't stand up at all. The torch that we put to it severely compromised it and the survivability is very, very small. I don't know if you can see this. But this is an average wall. I've got a half inch of OSB with some outside LP siding. And then it had about eight inches of void filled with just some insulation, followed by a wall of another half inch or so of OSB siding that would simulate a typical wall of a typical house. So I'm going to clean this up and then we're going to subject the composite block to the same punishment. So now we have the composite block. I will pirouette this again for you. This was the face of the block that we subjected to this type of torch. The instructions on the box it came in says it goes up to 3000 degrees. And we hit this for about two and a half, maybe a little bit more, two and a half hours of that blowtorch. There's one side, there's the other, and there's the hole where the temperature lead went in to the temperature gauge. And mind you, the cavity in this block is halfway in, so 
we were only, in essence, testing a block that was five inches thick, because it's 10 inches across, but we were measuring five inches in. All indications are that if people will use this composite, it's going to be closer to six to eight inches. So the heat transfer is going to take even longer. The building or barracks or shed or house is going to last even longer in a catastrophic event. So there are all four sides. There's the top you saw me put my hand on a bunch of times and not getting burned because there was no heat up there. Same with the bottom. Got a little bit of stuff flaking off, but just a little. It's a surface material. So let's take the sledgehammer, the composite block, and we'll see how it holds up. Hopefully more than two strikes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Let me catch my breath. So that is the result of just 25 strikes with that sledgehammer. I'm seeing some compromise Indian fracture in the middle and on the back side and we have surface material peeling off the front but it still would hold up a building and mind you I'm striking in the same spot every time there's the back of it getting some fracture through here I'm going to flip it over and give it a few more wax. I don't think it's going to last much longer. But all it has to do is remain standing and not disintegrate. I continue. One, two, three, four, five. calling it there. That's 30 strikes. Parts of it would still be in block form and still support the structure. I would say that's far more formidable than the industry standard materials that are used today to build our homes. And if you had the chance to check out my other videos, we actually take blocks eight inches by eight inches by 16 inches long. We subject them to high powered munitions like the 762 by 63, 762 by 51, 762 by 39, which is an AK-47, the AR-556, 12 gauge shotgun, and every handgun we could find. And we put dozens and dozens and dozens of rounds into just one of these blocks and it held. So a building built with this type of material is not only ready for catastrophic events such as a tornado, hurricane, flash fires, earthquakes, it can also withstand assaults from active shooters, gang violence, what have you. And all indications so far is that the building cost will be around or just slightly higher than what we're used to now in building homes and 
places where we work and live. And one of the blocks where we enhanced the aggregate mix actually stopped a 50 caliber 660 grain BMG. That's a 50 caliber round from a 50 caliber sniper rifle at 10 yards. This particular block you see in front of you would not stop that. It's got a specific mix to help lighten it, but this has stopped everything I mentioned before. With the exception, like I said, with the exception of a 50 caliber or a 7.62 by 63 armor piercing or a 7.62 by 51 armor piercing.